Today, I'll be interviewing Jackie Chow, who's one of the best SEOs I know, and who's already making $500,000 per month. In revenue, we'll be talking about whether he's going to become a chat GPT SEO billionaire, how to start making money on Google, and why AI SEO partnerships are the gold mine everyone's been ignoring, and how Jackie would make money with AI SEO if he was starting over again from scratch, from zero. Let's go. So how much do you currently make from SEO per month? I think roughly 500k a month. Just built below that in December, but roughly 500k. And I know you've been doing daily videos on YouTube, showing all the stuff and sharing everything that you do, which is pretty cool. Is it true that dry scooping creatine actually makes you better at SEO? I'm going to say yes. Yes, it does. I think ever since I started dry scooping, my MRM has gone just straight up. So massive correlation there. Yeah. Massive correlation. Definitely. Zero doubts there. Well, I mean, on a serious note, when it comes to achieving level of revenue per month, like 500k per month, where does that mostly come from? Like, how have you got to that level? Yeah. So I would say 70% from partnerships now. And that's something I've been shilling super hard. I don't even know why, because I don't really get that much benefit from talking about it, but fuck it. Thing is, uh, something that everyone's interested in, like even Authority Hacker, they mentioned that one of the biggest trends for this year will be focusing more on partnerships than niche sites. And I think one of the th good things that you're talking about is actually you're doing it and you're telling me you how you do it. Mm -hmm. With these partnerships, are you leveraging AI and ChatGPT to do the SEO? Yeah, absolutely. Otherwise, we can't do it at such a scale. But yeah, everything's manually edited at the moment. Have no plans to not do so yet. All right, awesome. And we'll come on to some more like technical questions covering how to do partnerships and mm -hmm. with the level of income that you're in at the minute, do you plan to retire or stop at any point? Like what's keeping you going? What's keeping me going? I guess just an absolute number, but yeah, I just want to be financially free. But then, then again, some may argue I, I can be financially free now. So I guess we'll see what happens. I just want to give myself a year trying to go really hard and then take and a then, step back from yeah. SDO. Yeah. Like yeah. not go as hard, you know? Like I would be all happy with a low five figure MMR at that point after a year. Yeah. Because one thing I wonder is the level of intensity that you must have to operate at must be insane. Like you can do that for a year or two. I don't know whether you can do that forever. No, you'll definitely burn out. I burned out once after COVID for sure. I took like a couple of weeks off, but COVID I was busting out. Like, I don't know about you. I'm guessing you too. It would probably be like 16 hour days every day for like nonstop for a year. But that was good times, man. It's good times. Especially if you have yeah. run an agency or doing client services, like it was almost too easy at that point. Yeah. Everything popped off. With your trajectory and the way that you go, would you want to reach like billionaire status or something crazy like that? Or you have a set number and you're willing to get out at that point? Probably the latter. I think to get to a billion, you have to get lucky. Not just once. I think you got to get lucky a couple of times. Like a couple hundred beggars is required. And that's like very, very hard because... Oh. What I'm like super conservative. So to hit a billionaire, uh, billion dollar status, I think you have to take a company and hundred exit at least once or twice, and then you'll probably hit there. But that requires you to either be extremely lucky or have crazy, crazy, like belief in the company you're in. But I'm a conservative investor. I don't know about you, but I'm an ETFs and chill type of guy. I hold a lot of bonds. I'm very risk averse minus my crypto holdings. I think outside of that, I'm pretty conservative. So I'm just right now accepting the 8% annual gain and I'm okay with that. Yeah. Not going after the hundred beggar. Yeah. The way that I see it is like to get to that level of wealth from SEO, which is a ridiculous target. The only way I can see it being really achieved is if you did something like Neil Patel, where you're selling mm. to enterprises or number two, if you were taking that money and then investing it very conservatively into something like S&P 500. And just doing that consistently, maybe like 50 or hundred K per month, you put into S&P mm -hmm. hundred and you do that for like 50 years. And then eventually you, you would get to that point of compare. Yes. Yeah, for sure. But to speak on Neil Patel, love the guy. I think he's absolutely killing it. But I think from what I remember, they would do roughly like a hundred mil a year, but at their scale, I'm pretty sure their EBITDA is single digit percentages in terms of like profits. So like on a hundred mil, it'd be sub 10 mil profit a year on like a thousand person headcount agency. I don't know if that's something I ever want to do for him to reach a billionaire status. He'd have to sell it. Right, man. Such a, such a nightmare. I would never, not nothing I would ever want to do. 
it's a lot of VAs to manage, isn't it? Yeah. And I, I think at their scale, it's not even just VAs anymore. They have, yeah. they have like account managers in the US, UK, so on and so forth. It's wild. Different scale. What do you think about niche sites in 2024? Do you think they're dead? Yeah, they're fucked. 100%. There's like, yeah, 100%. Like if you give me any example of a niche site you think is like successful, I will literally do an SEO heist with one of my partners and it'll be gone the next day. Like, you know, like I can just rip all the keywords, run it with AI, target the same keywords and it's over for the, the niche site. You know, I don't believe they're very resilient. So Jackie's coming for you, for anyone listening. Yeah, I, I would love to chat with like any of the white hatters dunking on black hat SEOs. If I find your site and you guys are just talking shit, I'll just like rip your whole site and then it's gone. You know, I would love to see that like, if any SEOs are watching this and disagree with that statement, which is a very polarizing statement, but I love it. Yeah. Thumb in with your website and let's see what Jackie can do. Yeah. Yeah. I could probably take like first five spots of their queries in like a day, most likely. Because to be honest, like the topical authority niche sites, all they're targeting are like keyword difficulty under 50, right? This is a different ball game. When you're playing above like 80, 80, it's a different ball game. So that's like the keywords we're trying to go after, like best test booster, best Viagra alternatives, shit like that. Like, do you think we can't rank for, I don't know, can dogs eat freaking chocolate? That shit will be gone tomorrow, you know? It's, yeah, I totally agree. And I think as well with SG coming in, these sort of informational terms where someone can get the answer in two or five minutes, it's just a matter of time before they get wiped out, right? Mm -hmm. I think there's still money to be made for sure. You can run that all the way to zero and you'll still make a lot of money because I think it's not wise to invest into niche sites in 2024, but I think there's still a lot of money to be made as it dies, like as the industry dies. With the level that you're at, how are you learning to scale a business like that? Like I know obviously one of the things I really respect about you is that unlike a lot of SEOs with these partnerships, you're willing to create massive value for the other person so that you get massive value in return, right? It's like win-win. How have you learned to do that? Yeah, I think the idea of partnerships didn't come to me like by myself. This like this opportunity presented itself. Like one partner reached out saying they can't pay us, but they have like a really strong site. So I was like, yeah, let's try it, right? Put your money where your mouth is. I think if you're that confident in SEO and that confident in monetizing, why not just do a rev split? Like it's a no brainer, right? I mean, the numbers show itself. I think we'll do two, 300K this month for one partner and our take is like 50%. Tell me a client where you can bill like 100, 150K a month. And it's wild out here, man. Yeah. And I think the more people we help and the more you help them, the more money you're going to make, right? Yeah, exactly. Literally everyone wins in a rev share partnership. Everyone wins. And it's in your best interest as well. Do you have any mentors or coaches that have helped you along the way? No, actually. I do have friends in different industries that I bounce ideas off of, mostly in e-com space. But yeah, the way they think is very different. Also, I think it's important to take everyone, what people say in the SEO industry with a grain of salt. That's very important. It's better to like test yourself. Wait, wait, wait. Are you telling me that content isn't king? No, it definitely is not. It is not king. 100% is not king. Are there any particular people that you follow or try and learn from? Like, for example, for me, if you look at all the content that we create, all the free stuff that we give away, et cetera, it's all based on people like Alex Hormozzi. That I've learned from. Is there anyone that you've learned from along the way or any, anyone that, that you follow? That I follow, I, I like Alex Hormozzi's offer, like a no brainer offer, you know, th those guarantees. I like the My First Million guys and just about everything they talk about in the pod. So I follow them pretty closely. I enjoy the content that Andrew Wilkinson puts out as well as, yeah, I think off the top of my head, that's about it. Plus, oh yeah, the All In podcast guys are really good as well. It helps you think bigger, right? I think it's uh, important to get out of your, the SEO circle once in a while, because people think really small in the industry. All, all In is a podcast. The investors, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. A couple of billionaires, pretty, pretty intense. How many hours per day do you work? Right now, less so. I would say maybe four or five hours max, but every day. So weekends included. No days off. Yeah, but it's, it's so easy. It's like, it's fun. I just wake up and do it, right? What else am I going to do when I wake up? I mean, for me personally, like work kind of feels like a game. And if I play video games or something like that, it, it bores me compared to work. Like it's just so much fun to build something, create something, especially when you're at the stage of leverage you're at, right? Because 
it's almost like you're towards the end levels of GTA mm -hmm. and that where you've got all the resources and you can build and do whatever you want. You have a lot of freedom. Yeah, absolutely. And I think money is like how I keep score. So revenue is how I keep score. So it's, it's really fun for sure. And since I track every single day down, down to the dollar at this point, it's super fun. Like any discrepancies, like if it's up, down, plus or minus 2%, you like kind of dig into like why. I don't do it live, but I kind of look and do it on a daily basis. It's pretty granular. Yeah, so this is something that we've implemented for our team, actually. So, for example, I have a VA that manages all of our case study sites. You know, we have over 100 case study sites. And we set a KPI for him where every single day he reports on how much money he made by sending links across those websites. So each day is like a game for him. And mm -hmm. he can track the numbers and see his progress along the way. I think this is one of the most fun ways to do SEO. Sick. Yeah, I've never heard of So you have one person managing that many sites just for guest posts? That's yeah. wild. Yeah, so basically all the contact form submissions, they go through to one of my email addresses, automatically labeled the link inserts, mm -hmm. and then blast through all of them. And he's a savage. Yeah, sick. When you respond to those emails, do you pitch all of your sites at once or do you just pitch one? Do you know so, what I mean? Yeah, so what we do is we negotiate one and as soon as we know they're a buyer, then we'll chase and follow up with them because like you said, if they're buying today, chances are they're going to buy from other sites. So they're going to buy mm -hmm. tomorrow or next month, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. We've implemented something like that, but on a much smaller scale for our portfolio. Yeah. I'm like a huge fan of selling links on your niche sites, especially on the downwards trajectory when it's getting clapped and people still want to buy it. Fuck it, man. Dude, you can buy all you want. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean. I'll be honest, it's, it's not the money-making method that I'm proud of, but does it work? And is it one of the fastest ways to start making money in SEO, especially when you can churn out a lot of AI content at scale? And there's mm -hmm. such a massive demand for backlinks as well. Mm -hmm. It works beautifully. Yeah. I mean, dude, it's like, I think my number probably across the portfolio is at least 10K a month just selling links. It's like the easiest money, I think, ever. Full stop. Yeah. And between like creating chat GPT content, Mm -hmm. Or using tools like also blogging, you know, I know you use Koala as well. Mm -hmm. You can churn out these sites and start ranking and getting link builders reaching out to you really, really quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I posted about this on Twitter and I got some backlash saying like, how can you sell links on a site that you wouldn't build yourself? Hey, if someone's buying, I'm going to sell. Like, who cares, right? If someone's asking you to buy links off that site, it's not our problem to educate. It's not our responsibility to educate them that, this site might not be the best for backlinks. You know, it's a free market. God needs to fulfill it. Thing is, well, they probably use the prospecting tool, like for example, Pitchbox or something like that, to filter out the metrics. For example, organic traffic or DR. And so mm. they've specifically said, right, I want a backlink from this site. It matches yeah. the metrics you want. So can't can't really complain on that. That if you had to start all over again with SEO, what would you do? Where am I at in life? Like in terms of like net worth, my skills, so on and so forth. Let's say there's probably a lot of people watching this who are new to SEO or haven't made money with SEO before. They're intrigued about it. Maybe they're running their own side projects, but they don't know realistically how to start making money. What would you recommend for that? And zero, zero dollars in the bank or what? Yeah. And maybe a thousand dollars in the bank maximum. A thousand dollars in the bank maximum. Fuck. Thousand dollars in the bank. That's tough. That's like very little money. I think that's like a bit of a stretch. I'd probably do some sales. I'd start pitching offer some performance guarantees, start off with agency, stack that uh, MRR that way. I'm a big fan of locking down an industry. So for example, if I'm from Vancouver and I want to niche down, I'd probably focus on like lawn care in the beginning. And then I'd go out and rank for lawn care in Vancouver keywords using a parasite and then use that to pitch local, uh, local SEO. Like, hey, just Google this. If you got to want to be placed number one here, it's a hundred bucks a month. If you want me to do your SEO and do something similar, it's a thousand dollars a month. And if we don't hit number one in X amount of months, get your money back type of, type of thing. Because yeah. uh, you got to make a name for yourself, I think, in the, in the beginning. And also like ranking on these Parasite SEO websites is ridiculously easy. Like for example, the last couple of days, I recorded two live videos where a rank to LinkedIn post ask. And the next day it's within 18 hours, it's ranking number one for keywords that my own website won't even rank number one for this like DR54. It's like these sites are overpowered right now, right? Yeah. It's stupid. So easily abused, especially like LinkedIn Pulse. Oh God. I think 
if it's free, it, it's way too easy. So at least if there's some barrier to entry, like a guest post price, like Outlook India, I'm like, okay, fine. That makes sense. But if it's LinkedIn, Pulse, Medium, freaking Reddit, anything free, I'm like, that's too easy. Like just start there. Yeah, actually to want to change my answer, just do Reddit commenting. It's, that shit is fucking easy right now. Yeah, by the way, if for anyone watching, if you haven't seen Jackie's videos, you're talking about this stuff like every single day, like battle tested tactics over the shoulder yeah. screen, would recommend checking out your channel if someone watching hasn't seen it already. For example, Pre the Reddit tutorial was really good. Like you basically created a Reddit thread, opened it up to anyone who wants to join who's watching YouTube videos, and then they can rank for their own affiliate keywords, right? And your thread is ranking for hundreds of keywords already. Yeah. Is this stupid? It's like so stupid. It's it, ridiculous. Yeah. 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 Like hair transplant turkey, which is like, I think a KD fucking 75 plus keyword, number four. So stupid. Like, I don't, I don't even know what to do with that information anymore. It's so outrageous. Yeah. It's too easily abused. I think Google's in a super, super tough spot. What are they going to do? You think, do you think they're going to clap parasites? If they do, they have to clap Forbes. If they do that. Forbes is like rich enough to sue them. And that's like a lawsuit ready to happen. Like all these authority sites, are they going to go after all of them at once? It's impossible. That's why I think partnerships is pretty resilient in 2020. Like what yeah. are they going to do, right? The way that I see it as well is like with AI and link building, you can build an SEO fortress, particularly if you're selling a service or you're an agency or mm -hmm. you're an income firm yeah. where you don't just rank on your own website, but you dominate the first page for Reddit, LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Cura, your own website, and whatever happens, whichever way Google reacts, as long as your content is still good, it has to be good in some way, then it's going to rank and you're not going to lose that traffic. It's an easy way to protect yourself. I think that's never been available before. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, yeah, this is, I think now this year or this last six months since the, the helpful content update, it feels like the good old days of SEO or the golden era. It's way too easy right now. They have to do something. That's what I thought as well. It was like, has there ever been a time where I could create content on the live with no edits and just ranked number one with one shot? I don't think there ever yeah. was before. I couldn't have done that two years ago, three years ago. No. And there was so, so much money required for writers. Now it's just like a click of a button. You're ready to go. You just post it. It's done. Yeah, it's wild. Quick question for your LinkedIn post, by the way, just side note. Do you post off of your personal LinkedIn where it's like aged? So it's my personal LinkedIn and we post content there every single day anyway. So churning out like four or five different social media posts with different polls and videos and stuff like that. And then we would just create a ranked content using LinkedIn polls. So it's already an authoritative web website, mm -hmm. already an authoritative profile. And I think you'll know better than most people is like, you've got so much EAC on that profile, right? Like a lot of authority, real person, mm -hmm. trustworthy, credible, topical authority on the subject. It makes it easy to rank any content. Fuck. I don't know if LinkedIn is EAT actually. I thought about this and my hypothesis, you can argue this if you want, but I think you have a lot of followers on LinkedIn, right? How many followers do you have? 12,000. So yeah. I think the more followers you have on LinkedIn, the easier for you to rank. And it's a common, because I think when someone follows you, I think it might be an, considered like an internal link to your page. Do you know what I mean? And with 12,000 followers, there's so many internal links into your profile. And then from your profile, if you post anything, there's like a lot of quote unquote link juice or link equity into those LinkedIn pulse articles. Hence why it ranks so easily. That, that's just a hypothesis. You can split test this by posting two similar articles targeting the same keywords on both your LinkedIn and your agency's LinkedIn post and see which one ranks higher. Same tactic, probably same prompts. That'd be an easy way to test because you have less followers on your agency profile, right? Oh yeah. And we're a lot less yeah. that as well. I think that could be a great video. Maybe. Yeah. Next year. yeah. Try that. L let me know though. S send that through afterwards. But that's just uh, something I, I was thinking about lately. But one thing I was thinking was if you look on Google now, for example, if you Google my name, it will feed into the Google results, not just my social mm -hmm. media platforms, but also the follower count for each platform. And potentially that could influence it similar to what you're saying as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, but based off of that, you could just buy followers, right? So cheap. It's like fucking two bucks per thousand followers. I would just crank that shit, every profile, if that's the case. But I think though the followers, your the fake followers don't have any followers, hence there's less internal links. So it's like 
a sh- considered like a shitty backlink. Whereas if you have organic followers, those guys actually have connections, more internal links. It's like considered a better backlink. I don't know. This is just a either tinfoil hat or I'm way missing the mark here. But yeah, yeah without, without getting the tinfoil hat on too yeah. much. I mean, there are ways around that. I won't go into too much depth now, but yeah, yeah. there are ways to find real people to follow you that look like real profiles. But like I say, crazy tangent there. How do you spend and enjoy your money? Traveling for sure. That costs a lot of money. We've been traveling for like a year and a half now. Staying in hotels, nice hotels. Yeah, that shit adds up. But I think afterwards, when we do settle down in Vancouver this year, I wouldn't know. I don't know. I'm like a homebody when I'm at home, like in my hometown. I don't really go out as much. So we'll see what I spend my money on. I'll find a way. Lifestyle inflation is real, man. I let that shit inflate all the way to the top. I think you have to enjoy your money a lot. Because like, Mm. for example, if you do this sort of stuff when you're 60 or 70, some of these opportunities are not going to be available to you, right? You might as well do them now while you're young and you can enjoy it. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to be in a scenario where I'm 60 with like a fuck ton of money, but I'm too tired to travel and I'm like miserable on one of those cruise lines. Like, man, no, hell no. I want to be walking through the cities by myself and yeah, getting in those 20K steps, you know? Do you spend on designer stuff too, like watches and that sort of thing? I know that's a pretty popular thing for influencers. Uh, Yeah, I was very much into watches during like all my life so i have a couple pieces as far as material goods go no i have like a couple nice pieces here and there but no, i don't spend that much of money on it yeah what about you i think you got a new rolex on is that a explorer yeah like two yeah. times yeah. mainly i got it because it made a great video title and that video ended up getting like 60k views so it was a great oh, story fuck. one of the other things was when i made that video i published it so many people who were interested in that sort of stuff reached out to me and it led to some interesting partnerships that are coming up later this year. I can't mm-hmm. say too much on that right now, but yeah, it opens up a lot of doors. I've never been a watchman, never wore a watch before last year. I never even thought mm-hmm. about buying a Rolex or something like that. But the thing I do think is, would it be better to get a Rolex now or to get it when I'm like 70 or 80 years old? It'd be far better to get it now, right? Dude, 100%. N- nothing comes close. Yeah. Have it now, wear it now, enjoy it. I think the most important thing with material goods, especially people who just get into it, is like they're made to be worn. It's not like made to be like in a safe somewhere. Then again, if I'm in London, I'm not wearing any pieces, man. Fuck. No, I don't want to get a knife. No, I'm like that's that's just fucked. If I go back to England, I'm not taking any stuff with me. I'm not gonna wear anything like that in public, like absolutely. Yeah, dude, I'm I'm not wearing anything. Like I'm I'm wearing a fucking H and M t shirt everywhere in London. Just wearing uni clothes, that's it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. What are your plans and next steps for you this year? Scale up partnerships. I think my main goal is to get to like a million a month. That's like my absolute peak. A million a month by Q4 this year. That is absolutely the goal. And then probably just take it easy afterwards. Because at a million dollars, that is assuming my margins don't take a huge dip. That's like 300K in profit a month. That would be sick. And then probably if I invest heavily, go hard into the S&P 500, I can have a massive nest egg when i'm 40 and i'll be okay how old are you now turning 32 in a couple of days actually yeah. happy birthday thank you thank you but yeah we'll we'll see we'll see i don't see seo as being around for too long but i know seo is going to adapt very quickly but i think our idea of seo won't be around in five years it's gonna be so different i don't think anyone will be able to recognize what it will be like in five years but i'm very confident the people in the industry will be able to adapt i just yeah. don't want to keep adapting it's tiring you know it's so fucking tiring so stressful too i don't know if you saw my like income reports earlier last year like it was so low it was like freaking 80k but my margins were super low as well so i think i was only like 15 to 20k profit in february last year that was like pretty nuts i was down bad at, at that point mentally as well is pretty bad because i got slapped so hard by google left and right and then i was trying to figure out like okay what am i going to do next type of thing but thankfully I stumbled upon partnerships and focus on the right things that's an interesting one because obviously you were still making a good amount of money for most people but it was still painful for you right yeah. I mean, if you take steps back, that's what happens, right? This is what I yeah. found is like, it doesn't matter what level you're at. Once you get beyond a certain level of comfort, it's more about progress. And if you don't make progress, that's equally as painful, no matter what stage you're at. 
So you always want to be moving forward and, and making progress in the right direction. Yeah, but that's not always the case, especially in SEO. God, it's so hard. If you can always keep up and to the right, it, which I don't think anyone can do that in the industry. Yeah, it's really tough on the mental because especially if you get slapped down so hard, as we see so many niche site owners in the helpful content update, I see people like just completely giving up when they shouldn't, you know, there's still money to be made. So that makes sense. When I was speaking to James Newley, obviously you've had him on your YouTube channel as well. Yeah. It, one of the things he does talk about is like, there were so many failures along the way. It wasn't just half towards where he wanted to be. It was very up and down, but the main thing is you're just learning and you never give up. Whatever happens, you just keep going. Unless of course it's stupid to carry on, but you keep persisting and learning and that's the only way you can really make it in SEO. Yeah. Yeah. But I think there's way too much survivorship bias in SEO as well. Way too much. For every person who flexes the 100K a month screenshots, there's like 10 people who got absolutely killed during the helpful content update, you know? And like great sites. And for example, farandaway.co, my like D2C site, like that affiliate side isn't the greatest, but for some reason it doesn't get slapped down as hard as, I don't know, the likes of freaking Retro Dodo, you know, which I think is like a superb site. Once Google deems you unhelpful, I don't know if anyone can re really recover that. Makes sense. Helpful. Yeah. If you were trying to help someone like me, for example, an agency owner, we're set to make about three or four million this year, the agency. Fuck yeah, let's go. Let's go. It's great. I mean, I never imagined to get to that level. And it's only thanks to everyone who watched this channel, honestly. But what would you say is the next level? Like, what would you recommend? And how would you bridge that gap between, say, where we are from reaching that one million a month figure? Uh, even getting to a half a million a month. Yeah. I guess to identifying your main, like, revenue drivers, I guess it's all from your YouTube, right? Is that true? It's all from YouTube, all your clients? Not all of them. So typically, what happens is it's just, we're a brand and mm -hmm. when I look at, for example, we've got a CRM where we can track mm -hmm. every lead that comes in, every sale that comes in, where they've reached us and how they found us. And usually it's like multiple touch points. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people know us from YouTube, but then they see us on LinkedIn they get right emails, they see the free course and it's like a combination of everything that it's omnipresence, I would say. Yeah. What's your first touch point? But the first touch point is usually YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. So that's like okay. top of the funnel. Yeah. I guess. If I were you and you want to keep going, like expanding your agency, Absolutely. right? That, that's yeah, your yeah. thing. Probably look into paid. Paid is the, the numbers are crazy in paid. And I think people in SEO are so against paid, which is the wrong way to approach it. Yeah. You, you just have to educate people more when it comes to paid. So I would start off with like retargeting on paid and you'll see a great ROI there and then probably get into first touch point, top of the funnel type of paid ads, um, it works 100%. It's like, without a doubt, B2B paid works. So you just have to crack it. And once you crack it, it's over. Like that, I think super clear to 10 million, if you can crack it. No, no agency has been really able to do a great job with paid. I know Fat Joe is doing a decent job there. So just check out their Facebook ad library and just rip a couple of those. I think Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, you gotta be everywhere, man. And you don't even have to spend that much. Just it's a, why not? But also I think you have a lot of risk if Google decides to one day quote unquote devalue links, right? Cause that's your main thing. Yeah. For example, if Google all of a sudden puts link importance to zero, like, are you clapped like left and right? Are you, are you just out? Massively. Yeah. So yeah. You probably switch to something that is valued more, for example, content. Yeah. So I think a good example is like. You know how before the emergence of AI, content agencies were like all the rage. They were like f popping the fuck off left and right, doing extremely well. And now with ChatGPT, all the AI tools coming out, they're so good. And I would argue some are better than the agencies. Like, what are they going to do? They're, they're, they're completely annihilated. So I think maybe to shield yourself from this risk, because it's not zero. That risk of links going to zero is not zero. So um, probably diversify slightly. But what do you do with your dividends? Do you just dividend out and then invest into something safe? Or what are you doing with your money? With the profits? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I take them out and I invest in mainly into S&P 500. That's like my biggest investment. I try and save 90% of the money that I make. And then oh. I just have fun with the 10% the that's left. Oh, then you're fine then. I think if it goes to zero, you're still going to be fine. So 
yeah, I think maybe grow as hard as you can. Give yourself maybe a timeline. That's what I would do in your position. I would like, hey, I'll give this my all. Tackle this as hard as I can for like one or two years. Try to exit and then chill after that. Set yourself a target and maybe don't remember to take profits along the way. I don't know, sell a piece of your company along the way. That's like the main thing. You see too many SEOs get destroyed from not taking profits. Yeah, I think that's something that we didn't track properly before. One of the biggest mistakes that I've ever made is not tracking the profits accurately as the team grew and as we scaled. And then additionally, yeah, it's like, don't keep all the money in the business. You know, investing in the S&P 500, it's one of the safest options that you have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think, have you read the book Profit First yet? Yes. Just do that. Take it all out first and then work backwards from there. It's painful though. How do you think SEO is going to change over the next five years? How is it going to change? I think it's going to change a lot. I think I spoke on this a couple of times already. Informational content completely destroyed. Like in terms of your niche site targeting informational content. If what, when, where, why keywords destroyed. I think there's a pace to be made for buyer and 10 keywords like buyer guides. For example, I would listen to you if you told me auto blocking is the best AI writer because you obviously use a fuck ton of AI writing tools for SEO. I would, I want to hear your opinion. So I think there's still a case to be made in, in that era. So I want to hear what, I don't know, freaking Gordon Ramsay uses as a pan, you know, shit like that. But I don't care what Gordon Ramsay thinks. I don't know if chocolate's good for you, you know, shit like that. If your query can be answered in one line, then you're fucked. Yeah. So like if your website is conductseatcucumbers.com, yeah, might be time to rethink the strategy. Yeah. And there's actually a lot of those during my site, like niche site buying days, which I still am on the market, but only for like great deals and great sites. Dude, there's so many nasty ass websites out there. I'm like 99% certainty they're all clapped within like two years. Just on the topic of AI writers, what are you using for creating affiliate reviews? Is it mainly Koala? Yeah, Koala is great. Koala is great starting point, And then my team goes in and edits it. And you use like 3.5 or 4 to generate the content? A mix between the two, but 3.5 is honestly good enough. A four, you just edit less, but dude, 3.5 is good enough. Do you know oh. any other AI writers that can do Amazon roundups? Not really. Like, it's crazy that most people haven't done this. Because it's such right? a good community. It's, it's a moneymaker. It's an instant moneymaker. Yeah, I think it's not easy though. A couple of people messaged me to like partner up on an AI writer, but they all give up because it's not that easy to do. Interesting. It's not like a one-step prompt, you know? Yeah, yeah. How do you find your partnerships with affiliates? It's mostly brought to me, actually, through the YouTube channel. It's great. So I think a lot of people ask me, like, how to get started. I'm like, tap into your own network. If you know anyone with, like, who owns a newspaper in the U.S., send them my way. I'll give you a lifetime, like, cut. And, dude, several, like, newspaper groups have been brought to me. And we're just going through the details now. Like, imagine me signing, like, 30 newspapers for a partnership. DR like 75 plus, all of them. Like, it's just like I, on a completely different level. And I would target all the same keywords on all of those sites. Do you think anyone would ever stand a chance on the, in any niche? And imagine I interlink them. I don't do that. I'm not doing that yet. But imagine I interlink all my partnership sites too. Dude, like, I don't even think Forbes would stand a chance at that scale. It's crazy when you think about the potential of that. Right? And it's underutilized potential. They, they don't even know what they have. It's crazy. Is it? That easy. So like literally you can take a newspaper like this, for example, and, and you are the guy at doing this. I think out of everyone I know, probably the leading voice in partnerships when it comes to SEO. Would you say it's that easy? Like literally you have a good process, you create the content with AI, you get some VAs to edit it manually, you publish it and you can rank for almost anything you want. Yeah. Given, given there's no, no one doing that already, like me, like if you're targeting the same keywords as me it's probably going to be a bit harder. But if no one's in that space yet, fuck, it's so easy. Especially for like really, really low competition keywords. Yeah, it's, it's that easy. I think what it'll look like exactly is it'll jump to the second, third page immediately, and then it'll like edge upwards throughout time. And eventually it'll hit front page. You'll start making money, so on and so forth. And the rest is history. And then you start doing rank and rents. Dude, that's, that shit's crazy. We started to get into that. So we built out about 50 rank and rate websites last year. And a lot of them were only like DR0 still. 
mm-hmm. but they're ranking within like 20 or 30 days, number one for their target keywords. It's almost too easy, isn't it? To rank for these local keywords. Yeah. I think it's just so stupid that exact match domains work. But what I meant by the partnership rank and rents is more like affiliate content rank and rents. That is what more people should be doing. It's pretty crazy. For example, you rank for best protein powder, you reach out to Optimum Nutrition, make them pay you 20K a month to be number one and like disclose that as well. That's interesting. Maybe I should try and do that for SEO and then I'll make a case study on YouTube about how we did it. Yeah. The money is, you make way more money from that than affiliate, like way more, way more, way more. So in my th- partnership example, 30, 40% of that is from just rank and rent. That's crazy. It's fucking, fucking nuts. It's like, why wouldn't you do it? Because you know, for example, a brand reaches out to you and you're just like, yeah, we'll place you number one if you give me 50% of commissions. No, fuck that. It'll be 70% commissions plus freaking like 5K a month flat to be number one. Like they'll, they're willing to pay. It's just no one asks. And apparently no affiliates asks. I've asked in the past either, but the numbers work out for them. And you're going to make way more money from that than say, just making a few dollars here and there from Amazon. And I think... To get this idea, you have to know how Amazon works too. So I used to sell on Amazon. So I know that the more referred sales from outside traffic sources you get from, for example, from affiliate, the higher you rank on Amazon. So this is like Amazon SEO things. So they're they're super interested in getting off Amazon sales and that's why they're willing to pay. So if you go up to these huge FBA aggregators like Drazio, I don't know forum brands, so on and so forth. They're all willing to pay to be number one. It's wild. With so many opportunities out there and you know how to make money from all these different ways of ranking with SEO. How do you pick the highest left ones or how do you focus? Dude, our main pain point right now is selling people, like making them pay us once we rank. It's not, the issue is not ranking. It's finding people to pay us. So that's what we're doing right now. We focus on, we reverse engineer it. So we find people who are willing to pay us. They're like, hey, I want to be number one plastic surgeon in Miami. Then we go out and rank for it. Then they pay us, shit like that. So that's what we've been focused on right now. My final question for you. I know you said, if you're not getting clapped, you're not pushing your limits hard enough. What are the craziest things you've been clapped for? Oh, I mean, I've been manually penalized several times by Google. There's a lot of niche sites get penalized. But I've done some nasty ass tests. Like I've sent a hundred PBNs with exact match anchors to a single post. It ranked number one for like months though. So it just goes to show Google doesn't know what they're doing. And eventually it gets clapped, but freaking you walk away with like 10 grand in your pocket. And I don't know, the white hat SEOs are sitting around with like 300 MRR and which one do you want to be? So I think that is probably a couple of times getting clapped by that. A lot of algo penalties. Yeah, I think way too many algo penalties. I think most of my niche sites have been clapped now at at this point. I would say 80% of them are clapped to oblivion. And clapped is not like 30% dip. It's like 60, 70%. It's pretty bad. When you're getting clapped that much, and I love the word clapped. Yeah, it's bad, huh? I don't know where you get this lingo from. But when you're getting clapped like that, Are you hosting your websites on different accounts, different hosting, different GSC accounts, or is it all in one place and it doesn't really matter? I don't think it really matters. So I'm pretty certain this is what happens. So you grow a site, a niche site that you own, does like 100, 200K visits a month. And then the Google Raiders come in, Raider Hub visits your site. They're like, all right, this site is not deemed helpful. Boom, click. And then you get like a remark on your site that shit gets clapped in the next core update. You're wondering what happened and you try to recover it, but whatever you do, it won't be able to recover that unless another Raider hub visitor comes and then removes that. So I'm pretty sure this is what happens. And this also happens with partnership sites. That's why I think EAT matters is because like when someone manually comes from Google and reviews your site, you have to pass that test. And we've had partnership sites where they pass this several times. And we've had partnership sites where they didn't pass it. And the only difference is like how trustworthy the site looks. So I think that's the only thing I've noticed so far in terms of correlation. So all my niche sites have not passed the test. Whereas I guess far and away, Google deems freaking helpful, which is odd as hell because it's not that great. Well, really appreciate you being on. Learned a lot today. 
Is there anything you want to say before you go? No, nah, man. I think everyone go buy Julian Goldie's links and subscribe in the link down below. And if anyone wants a partnership, check out Jackie Chow. And what's the best way to contact you on Twitter or? Yeah, Twitter. Twitter is good. All right. We'll leave a link to your Twitter. And then also, if no one's checked out Jackie's channel on YouTube, really amazing. It's growing fast. I think it's going to blow up at some point. So congrats on that, man. Appreciate it, man. All right. Cheers. Take it easy.